Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News on iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, whenever you see a champion who has problems making weight, right, who starts to look a little bit lackluster in fights, then understand the worst kind of opponent for that fighter, right, a guy who fitness-wise right might not be there in the later rounds after making weight the day before at the weigh-in the worst kind of guy to put him in the ring with is a guy who's high volume who's in shape who's going to force him to work and who has a history of making it to the later rounds right who has never been stopped now all of those stars have aligned for the proposed match for the title at 140 pounds between champion and he's unbeaten Danny Garcia and challenger Victor Postal right I like Postal to win the fight since Garcia is a puncher I'm gonna hedge the play with Garcia by KO. Now understand, we all have a list of fighters who we feel are ripe for defeat, right? The fighter might be a great fighter, but for whatever reason, we sense that their career is about to suffer a setback. I believe Danny Garcia is one such fighter. I'm just not impressed by the work he did against Mauricio Herrera. Let's talk about the Rod Salka fight. I thought Salka fought the wrong fight. You don't trade with Danny Garcia, especially after you've been knocked to the canvas. But more importantly, I wasn't that impressed with Danny Garcia's work. It looks to me like Danny's game is to duck his head, plant his front foot, and throw these hooks that an opponent can't tell whether the hook is going to hit their body or their head right so Garcia is just bending down if the opponent guesses wrong like Salka did right he could get hit in the head with a shot that he thought was going to his body and then dropped but if you look at Danny Garcia's record closely, you're going to see that guys with jabs, Ashley Theopane, I keep mentioning this fight, can give him problems. Danny Garcia, style wise, is a mid range hooker. He's not that good a jabber. I know Zab Judah is a southpaw and Postal is a righty. I know it's harder for some fighters to land jabs against a southpaw, but understand. Against Zab Judah, if you look at the CompuBox numbers, Danny Garcia threw more than 170 jabs over 12 rounds. And you will see that according to CompuBox, he landed less than 10 of them. His jabs landed at a 5% rate. Right, now let's talk about Victor Postal. I want you to take a look at the knockout of Selkuk Aiden in the 11th round. I know the press is reporting that he drops Aiden with an uppercut. But I want you to look closely at the combination in which that uppercut is folded. You're going to see that Postal actually throws two uppercuts in that combination. Two. Look at the copy box numbers. Right? We're looking for a guy who has high volume and stamina, who could drag Danny Garcia to the later rounds. Did you know that Postal, in a fight that did not go the distance against Selkuk Aiden, topped a hundred punches thrown 
in seven different rounds. A hundred punches thrown in several different rounds, right? Seven different rounds. Understand, too, Postal has a piston-type jab. Right now, if Ashley Theopane was frustrating Danny Garcia with the jab, just imagine what Postal can do if he gets that jab popping. Right? Understand, too, that Selkuk Aiden is a big puncher. That's his calling card. I believe his nickname used to be Mini Tyson or something like that. Right? Well, Selkuk Aiden is very similar style-wise, in my opinion, to Danny Garcia. And understand, Postal dominated Selkuk Aiden. That fight wasn't close. So what you have, in my opinion, and Postal, by the way, is unbeaten. Aiden's not the only name he fought. He fought and he beat Hank Lundy. Right? What I also like about Postal is that that Aiden fight was in Southern California. Postal, who is Ukrainian, has traveled for fights. Right? He's not going to you know, fly into the United States and suddenly be overwhelmed by American culture. He's already been here. He's already dominated. Right? So, given everything, the fact that Danny Garcia has a problem against a good jab, I want you to look at the first Eric Morales fight. Right? Keep in mind, El Terrible goes 12 rounds. Right? Given that Danny has a problem with the good jab, given that Danny has had a problem making 140, right? keep in mind the Rod Salka fight wasn't even at 140. Right? The Mauricio Herrera fight in Puerto Rico, where you would think Danny would dominate, didn't many of you believe that that fight was razor close? Aren't there doubts whether Danny won that fight? Where's that rematch? Why did Danny decide that he would rather fight Rod Salka than have a rematch against Mauricio Herrera? Right? So you put all of it together, and let me add one other caveat. The hand speed's not close. Right? Victor Postal has much faster hand speed than Danny Garcia. Right? I believe the title changes hands. I know it's crazy betting against an unbeaten champion who, after the Rod Salka fight, is clearly going to be the favorite. But put me among those folks. I think the title changes hands. I think Danny Garcia loses this fight. I wouldn't be surprised if Danny Garcia doesn't take the fight. Garcia could easily say, that he's having too much trouble making weight. Or Garcia could pick another path to a title by fighting Lamont Peterson, who, by the way, I think also beats him. But Garcia could abdicate his own throne and could fight for Lamont Peterson's title. Right? But understand, not that many people know who Victor Postal is. And there's little reward here for Danny Garcia. What happens? If Garcia starts to get winded, can't figure out Victor Postal's jab, and Victor Postal then starts putting up a hundred punches in a round. What happens if Postal, who's adaptive reactive, in other words, he's figuring out what punches to throw. The Victor Postal who starts a fight is not the Victor Postal who ends the fight. You know, he gets hit with a bomb by Selkuk Aiden early in their bout gets backed up into the corner, right? Aiden's not able to land that punch again the rest of the fight, right? Keep in mind, too, in terms of maturity, Victor Postal is 30. Just because people haven't heard about him doesn't mean he's a young puppy. This is a veteran fighter. So if you're looking for a possible upset, if you're looking for, at a minimum, a live underdog. 
Keep an eye on this fight. A sanctioning body has ordered a purse bid for the fight to take place shortly. Right? Keep an eye on this fight. If Danny Garcia decides to fight Victor Postal, I'll be in line picking Postal to win the fight, and I'm going to hedge the play with Danny Garcia by KO. Right? I'm expecting this fight to be mispriced. I'll make a follow-up video if the casino solve this puzzle early and actually install Postal as the favorite. Danny Garcia is a crowd favorite. He has fought, you know, a long list of excellent opponents. I'll give him credit. He fought Zab Judah. I'll give him credit. He fought Lucas Matisse. Right? I'll give him credit. He's fought Amir Khan. No question about it. He's not a paper champion. His problem is that boxing has weight classes, right? He's at that age where his body's not shedding the pounds as quickly as it used to. And Danny's a guy who's a flat-footed mid-range hooker. He's not up on his toes, right? You haven't noticed it in part because Amir Khan decided he was going to slug it out with Danny. Rod Salka, who could move decided he was going to slug it out with Danny, right? When's the last time you saw Lucas Matisse fight where he wasn't trying to slug it out with an opponent, right? And so the point is, Danny has been in some great slugfests. What I want you to do is to look back a few fights to the Ashley Theopane fight, right? Theopane is a guy who's slippery. He's elusive. He has a jab. You're going to see that he made Danny look awfully bad. That was a close fight. Theopane went the distance with Swift. Right? Victor Postal has a good jab and he has volume and he's able to make weight. He's the mandatory. One of two things is going to happen. Right? Either Danny takes this fight and it's a great betting opportunity for all of us. Or Danny abdicates his title. I like Victor Postal to win this fight. I'll hedge it with Garcia by KO because somehow Garcia seems to lure guys with legs into shootouts. Right? But I suspect what we'll find out is Postal is smart enough to use a jab to keep distance between him and a mid-range hooker. Right? He'll use a jab to split Danny Garcia's defense. Right? What I want people to realize, too, is if you go through Danny Garcia's CompuBox numbers, you're going to find out that his defense is not that good. He gets hit with a lot of power shots in fights. If you don't believe me, just go back and look at his CompuBox numbers. I expect Postal to use that jab to read Garcia, then to increase his volume as the fight goes on. Right? This is the kind of fight where if Garcia doesn't get an early knockdown, and I'll give him credit, he stopped Khan early. Right? He stopped Salka early. Right? If Garcia doesn't get an early knockdown, I'm expecting Garcia to be behind on the scorecards by the start of the seventh round. That's how great the hand speed gap is. That's how great the volume gap is, in my opinion. Right? This fight looks ripe for an upset. I believe Danny Garcia's title is at risk. I like the challenger here. Victor Postal to win the fight. I'll hedge the play with Garcia by KO. You should be able to get better than even money on both sides of the play. If the casino is slicker than I think, then I'll come back on here with a follow-up video. Uh, talking about the actual posted odds at the casino. Keep an eye on this fight. It hasn't been announced yet. It might be announced soon. Just understand, Danny Garcia's title, in my opinion, will be at risk. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.